They said it was impossible. They said... Ah, you can't put together the most elite team of comic book reviewers on the planet and do, you know, a podcast or something like that? Despite all that, today we can proudly announce... Yeah, yeah, they were right. We, uh, we couldn't do it. So instead, we brought you the most vile, ignorant, unprofessional group of comic book enthusiasts we could find. This is Panel to Panel, the Game Rage Magazine comic podcast. Welcome back in one and all to another fine, fine episode of Panel to Panel. My name's Josh. I'm here today with good buddy Adam. Good buddy Adam. Yeah, greetings. Uh, get ready to unsubscribe, unfollow, ban, block ban. and report. Yeah. Um, report us to the FBI and CIA. Fuck the CIA, probably the NSA, NSA too. too. Yeah. Uh, Department of Homeland Security, uh, the ATF, fucking... <laughs> the <F>. ATF. <laughs> Yeah, they're going to come shoot all my dogs. So yeah. that's, you know, that'll be fun, I guess. Uh, anyways, today we're going to be doing Darth Vader number 12. So stay tuned for that. But before we get into that, if you want to uh, listen to all of our other shit, you can follow us on YouTube and like, comment, and subscribe. Game Rage Magazine. You can also go to Instagram and TikTok at Game Rage Magazine, Twitter slash X at Game Rage Mag, if that's your kind of deal. If you want to do that, that's fine. I don't give a fuck. Uh, you can follow Adam at All Gas No Trash Official on Instagram. And go check out All Gas No Trash, the podcast. Also, if you like anime, go fuck around and find out on Frank's Anime Syndicate podcast. <laughs> and you can follow him at Anime underscore Syndicate underscore podcast on Instagram. All right. Darth Vader, number 12. Oh, shit. <sighs> Here we go. Darth Vadering it up in here. Number 12. Uh, we got this sweet cover with Vader leading all of the fucking stormtroopers into battle. The uh, seemingly the 501st. <clears throat> and as always, we will have uh, fucking uh, triple zero read the, <laughs> the Tra- fucking... Transatlantic. The transatlantic uh, accent, triple zero fucking leading, uh, reading. Which basically, since that's who it is, I think that's who's reading this. It's just triple zero reading it. Um, I will say it was quite funny, which we're going to do for the next episode is going to be a full discussion of the in series. I, I guess the special crossover event, yeah, crossover uh, event. Vader down and, uh, triple zero and BT might be the two greatest characters that they've ever made. <laughs> Dude. Yeah. Yeah. They actually have a pretty sweet moments. Yeah. In that. That, that, that's, that's, they, 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 they gave them. Some shit to do, man. It was pretty great. Anyways, all right, whatever. Well, let's read this. But so book two, part six, Shadows and Secrets. <clears throat> it is a time of unrest. After the Death Star was destroyed by an X-Wing pilot, the Sith Lord Darth Vader has been eager to track down the false strong rebel responsible. Vader's adjutant, Inspector Thanos, located the ante, an information broker he suspects has crucial knowledge regarding stolen Imperial credits. Droid archaeologist Dr. Afra, who runs around with cake in her pants, gets to the ante first and buys from him the location of Luke Skywalker, the pilot responsible for the Death Star's demolition. Darth Vader and Thanos arrive just in time to discover that Afra is the one who stole the mission's credits. They manage to also... Get the location of the Plasma Devils from the ante before the information broker is killed. Aphra nearly escapes, but Darth Vader and Thanos now have her cornered. All right, so uh, we get... It's funny you do that. What? Dual fates. It's It's not episode one. Yeah, I know, right? It's not even... Well, (laughs) really, the, the, the end credit or the end crawl is like that... Burm, burm, burm. Like it's like that's usually what happens after that, and then it leads into whatever. Uh, but I just like that dual face because it's my favorite. So I just that's why I do it. Uh, anyways, and it's also like the reverse of anticlimactic because you would think that oh it's just gonna be like this soft opening, and then but you're getting as soon as the as soon as the credit the the opening crawl goes, you're getting dun, 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 like oh shit something's happening, and it's like ah oh, nothing's actually happening. You, you like, know we know I heard something about the theme for Nabu. Yeah, I think I might have heard the same thing you did. Yeah, okay, all right. You're, so, yeah, I heard the theme of Naboo is actually a slowed-down version of Emperor Palpatine's theme. Yeah, 
No, which, I, I'm like, if that's true, I'm, I'm going to listen to that fucking song. Yeah, we might have to do that because I don't know if that's true or not, but I heard it. I heard the same thing. Yeah. So that would be very fucking interesting. Yeah, so but now anyway. we're back with uh, Dr. Afra in... It, cornered by the, Gala- the Galactic Empire uh, <laughs> within this cloud storm and uh, seemingly cornered and she, whatever way she comes out, they got her. Yeah, they, they got her. She's fucking bowed. And so, uh, basically, they're ready to go jump her shit. Her ship's in there and basically, she's either going to come out or they're going to drag her shit out there once it gets disabled. And so... <laughs> they're like, um, yeah, we're going to lose some dudes, but definitely we're going to be able to bring her to the Imperial Justice. And, uh, you know, perhaps, and then Thanos is, is says, and perhaps even her patron, meaning, you know, Darth Vader, as he's like looking right he's at like, him. He's like, son of a bitch, you, you, sh- you shut your whore yeah, mouth. <laughs> shut your whore mouth. And, and so Thanos is basically saying like, yep, because there's got to be one. This would have required a, an internal leak. Why, why are you saying it like that, cuz? Yeah, why, why, and then that's Vader's, hmm, this is a waste. <laughs> And then he's like, what do you mean? What do you mean, good buddy? And he's like, uh, we have the, the strike force ready. We have the location of the plasma devils. And here we are chasing this fucking stupid asshole who just stole some money. And Thanos is like, oh, oh I'm such a fool. Oh, my greatest weakness. The chase consumes me. Uh, and so that he, he makes this daring suggestion, he says to Lord Vader. With the fall of such a major figure as the ante, the entire system will be in an uproar. All or will suspect their safety is compromised. We know where these plasma devils are now. We have no idea where they will be this evening. This woman's a professional. She acted against the Empire, but there's no public loss of face. No one even knows about this except for us. So to choose between the plasma devils and a simple thief is no choice at all. But this will mean abandoning our mission. But surely it's the only course. And then Vader's like, yes, ha ha, finally, (laughs) you are correct. Uh, and he says, let's do this. And um, Vader says, uh, ta- Tag will be displeased. And he says, oh, yeah, he will if, if we fail, though. And uh, But I, he's like, I don't think we're going to fail. We're not in the business of failure, bitch. Man, you called it. I, I was thinking this motherfucker, there's no way he could die. I, and they gave, well, I don't know how you feel about this excuse for how they courted away Thanos and the Galactic and well, whatever fleet they have there, away from Doctor Afra. This seems like a. It's not exactly hand wavy, but it's such a simple solution to the problem that it it doesn't suffice for me. Yeah, and in the grand scheme of things, <clears throat> they are right. Like they have to make this choice, but because Thanos knows about. Vader's essentially under the the gun with this whole thing, and that's the whole reason why he's been assigned to him as his quote-unquote adjutant or whatever. So he knows, like, oh, man, we got to come out with something from this. Like, oh, this stupid-ass little fucking thief- thievery is not a big deal. We have a We have a chance to take out the Plasma Devils, which actually is someone else's fucking job. So, because you know, those twins fucked fuck the whole thing up. So now... Now Thanos is, is pissed about it, and he's like, great, you fucked up our shit. Well, now we're going to go take your shit from you and do your job and then make you look stupid. So we might fail in our mission, but we're going to make sure we complete yours and make you look stupid. And, so, and if if there was a tier of priority, finding these guys is far more important. Oh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, like... These plasma devils are just... It's like a terrorist group. It's like a terrorist cell. So if you had some guy that stole some money from you... Ah, whatever, like, we can maybe go get to that later. They'll escape now, but, like, we know where these motherfuckers are right now. That We ain't gonna know where they're at later on in, in like, a few hours even, possibly. So we, we we better get them while the getting's good. And so, uh... I was to say they can just have a TIE fighter follow that person. I don't, even, I don't know if they have a warp drive. <clears throat> no, TIE fighters don't have uh, hyperspace or hyperdrive capability, so that's... That is the inherent flaw with TIE fighters, is they are required to be part of the fleet like they can't venture too far which is why and i think it's an episode i think it's empire strikes back uh they're they're talking about oh like or no maybe it's even in uh a new hope where 
there's a single TIE fighter that comes and fucks with them, and they're like, oh shit, there's a TIE fighter, and they're like, fuck, you know what that means? An Imperial battle fleet is not far away, because TIE fighters don't have the independent ability to basically operate outside of being involved with the Star Destroyer, because they don't have, I mean, the pilot has life support, they don't even have life support systems in the ship, they have the pilots wearing them, that's what that box is, and like all that shit that they wear, it's because the they have to wear the life support system because the ship doesn't even have it. I mean, well, fuck, they don't even have landing gear with the goddamn... Right, no, they don't. Well, <laughs> they don't have hyperspace, they don't have shields, they don't have shit because they're not even expected. It's like, you go out there and blow shit up, and if you die, you die, oh well. Like, it's easier, cheaper to replace you mm -hmm. than it is to put shields on this shit. So, which is funny. But, uh, anyways, fucking Afra's like, oh, thank God, they're fucking leaving. I'm gonna live. And then, fucking, from the shadows, you see his fucking evil red eyes... Fucking triple zero. Uh, for now, Mr. Zaffa, you'll live. For now. Ha <laughs> ha. And, uh, oh, fuck. I just fucked off on the thing. Uh, so then they're, they're bouncing out. So we go to the Fantine substrata of Anthon 1. And we've got Vader and Thanos here about to assault the Plasma Devils, which, as we see, are this uh, rebel... Uh, group with X wings and fucking Y wings y -bomber. and all that kind of shit, and they've basically just been going around fucking shit up. Uh, I originally thought I don't know if I just wasn't paying attention, but I thought the Plasma Devils were a criminal organization. Okay, I thought the same thing. I'm like, wait, hold when did up. they become rebels? That's how I was like, who the fuck? Like, yeah. I did not expect this at all. I thought that's the whole reason why they were just like, oh, who cares about these fucking plasma assholes? I thought they were a literal criminal syndicate that was undermining the Empire, and that's why they sent the twins after them. I didn't, re I didn't know it was a fucking rebel cell. Yeah, so I, maybe, 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 maybe they I, did allude to it, and I didn't. I, maybe we just didn't pay attention. To it. I, don't I don't know because they were pushing that whole uh, asshole that they were going after. That was the person that was leading them to a Rodian. Oh yeah. Well. But they didn't they light that place up? Yeah. I thought that whole thing was the... Pl uh, fuck, I already forgot. But in any case, yeah, I, I was... Uh, that kind of left me dumbfounded because I was under the impression that they were going after the people, like a larger group that was commandeering ships and stealing shit from people and mainly the Empire. Yeah, that it was like... But it was like a criminal group. I didn't think it was a fucking rebel <laughs> cell. I was yeah. like, holy shit, these are legit rebels. Like, yeah. god damn. So we get to see all their shit and uh, all the rebel, the rebel, little rebel base. With their fucking mushroom head fucking helmets. I hate those things so much, they man. So that, looks, that is the worst they look, design, They look man. so docile. They like, do, man. <laughs> they literally, they look like fucking Toad from fucking goddamn Mario. Like, yeah. Um, so anyway, they uh, they find out that this uh, the light cruiser has has shown up and it started firing on the western half of this area that they're in. So basically what the plan that Vader and Thanos are going to do is they're going to cut off one side and force them to exit through the east side like passageways but vader is going to be there that's the plan and so uh basically they're they're like fuck it you guys know the routes let's just get out of here and follow the escape plan and so everybody bounces out and the dude gets in the y-wing and vader's just chilling waiting there i like how he already has his fucking lightsaber deployed like he's just sitting there and this Y-Wing flies out, and Vader just fucking yeets this lightsaber at it and fucking cracks it right in the left uh, side engine and just cuts it clean off. And this dude's like, what the fuck? Like, what just happened? And Vader literally called, like, this is cool as fuck to see him call back the lightsaber. Like, and he, so as the thing in the background, the Y-Wing's fucking detonating, he's like, there is no escape. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> He's getting ready to fuck their shit up. And then basically, we don't get to see it, but then he comes back to the uh, basically where Tag is at, and he's got these fucking helmets, these rebel helmets laying out. And he's like, he's telling Tag that the plasma devils have been allied, uh, are annihilated. And the, the guy of the twins is pissed. He's like, uh, yo, that wasn't your mission, dog. Like, why are you stepping on our toes, player? And Thanos is like, nope, it was your mission. But you and your dumbass sister can thank us later. Uh, now that you have the afternoon free for decapitating, decapitating more useful leads, which was a fucking great string of words. And so Tag is like, ha, man, this is fucking great. I love this shit. Um, but 
You guys let this thief escape, and it's very unlikely that we'll ever fucking get to see them again. And uh, Thanos is saying, strictly speaking, I gave the suggestion, so if there's blame to be assigned, I... And then Vader cuts him off and says, the decision was mine. Chasing after a few missing coins or crushing the rebels. That is not a choice. And honestly, he's right. Like, that... Even though... Vader did this completely because he didn't. He needed Afra to get out of there because he didn't want it, fucking this whole thing to be exposed. But in the grand scheme, he is correct. Going after the rebels is the right move to do. Like, just, uh, some thief that stole some shit, and eh, we we can pick up this trail later. We we can maybe find him eventually again. But killing rebels, oh, that needs to happen right now. Yeah. And so uh, Tag is just sitting there in his little command chair, thinking, and he says, "Well." In the situation as presented with this limited time frame and all these delays would have resulted in disseminating, disseminating relevant information to the proper parties, I guess you guys made the right decision. <laughs> and so... Uh, but it also sandbags, like, a majority of the story that's been told up until this point. Well, somewhat, that they were going after this party, this go- this wild goose hunt mm-hmm. that turned out to just be Vader... Well, not that they know, but uh, that they were also going after these plasma devils. I'm like, ah, well, shit. I don't know. I kind of, uh, I think it's like, it's. Sh- I think it's showing the, I don't know what it is, like the nature of how shit, it's like that, that there's a word for it, uh, it's like when shit's all fucked up or like anything that can happen. Murphy's Law, right? Murphy's Law, yeah. It's showing that on this grand scale because everything that could have gone wrong for Vader has basically gone wrong up until this fucking point. Now some things are starting to go in his favor, even though they're, it's still going wrong. He's just getting lucky and able to like maneuver things into a position to where now it looks good for him or he can continue covering shit up. Like, um, so, but yeah, it does kind of like, it does. It just. It just undermined like the whole fucking story that's already been up to this point for the, for this aspect of it. But uh, anyway, so we got uh, we got old fucking uh, uh, fucking uh, what is it? Commander Akbar or Commander whatever his fucking name is, Carbon, uh, the Admiral Akbar fucking Mon Calamari, uh, General General Grievous Mon Calamari or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Um. He's he's talking shit to the twins, and uh, <laughs> then Tag jumps in and says. Hey, uh, you don't get to jump in and tell these judge these assholes uh, until you've done something on your own mission. And he's just saying, oh, I've, I've made great, great steps towards. And then Vader just asks him, do you have the boy? Or no, the, he asks him that. And he says, no, Grand General, not yet. And then I forget what this chick's name is, the tech lady. She's like, oh, what a surprise. Hmm. Hmm. Like, <laughs> what a dick. So then uh, he tells him, Tag tells him, all, oh, fuck off, get back to work. And so now this is where we get... Uh, the departure of, of Thanos, essentially, and uh, he goes and says, uh, Thank you, Lord Vader. I've had commanders who'd have thrown their subordinate into the trash compactor in such a situation. And uh, Vader just says, I do not fear any of these fools. And Thanos replies with, Now I can see that. You know, it's been an honor, Lord Vader. Having a minor misdemeanor turn into a grand triumph is far more than I would have hoped. It's a shame the thief escaped, of course. And Vader says, do not worry, Thanos. She will not escape justice. And we, we cut to Afra chilling with uh, BT and Triple Zero. And uh, Triple Zero's, <clears throat> uh, Mistress Afra, I, I, I must question your wisdom in coming here. I'm, if, if I'm not very much mistaken, uh, manipulating Master Vader by withholding information is the sort of behavior one would classify as blackmailing him. <laughs> <laughs> he he was quite clear on what would result from this, and uh, she just likes like oh fuck thanks for thanks for bringing that up. Uh, though it does make a droid wonder how exactly he'll terminate you. And then BT says something. He goes ah yes B- BT he certainly could do that. <laughs> oh, all that all this like and she's like guys you're not fucking helping me. And, and then as she's mid sentence, Vader just appears out of nowhere. She's like ah, and she, he's like well. And she's like, fuck, dude, uh, Vrogus Voss. The boy's on Vrogus Voss. And he says, I am surprised to see you here, Afra." And she says, listen, if I send you a message and run, you're just going to hunt me down and kill me. I figure the best chance I have of surviving is to, sh- to showing you that, hey, man, I'm trustworthy. And this, this is a far departure 
character wise from most people that end up becoming or being underlings of Vader with what she says right here, she tells him, I want to work for you, man. Like, I want to do this. No one wants to work for Darth Vader, even in, especially in the Empire, because generally everyone who does ends up dead. That's basically the MO of Darth Vader is he just kills his subordinates because they piss him off or they fail and then he murders them and then that's it. So, I mean, Boba Fett died indirectly, but... True, but Boba Fett's not like... Because he technically, he technically got Han Solo, but right. he died because of Job the Hut. Right, but he didn't die because of like Vader. I mean, yeah. Vader didn't kill him, I guess, right? So it's very, and, and the only reason that he, I, I, listen, I don't think Boba Fett wanted to work for Vader. He just wanted the money that the Empire was gonna give. She's like, I think she fully wants to do this. Like to her, this is- The good work. Is, it's, I, I, I don't know if it's that far, but it's like, this is awesome for her. Like this is fun for her. She loves this shit. Yeah, but at the cost of fucking Possibly her dying? life, <laughs> every fucking, hey man, every issue, like, oh my God, if I don't get this right, I might die. <laughs> to, do what you, to do what you love, man. You do what you love, you'll never work a day in your life, even though you might die every single day. But yeah. Yeah, hey, man. Uh, so she basically says, I want to work for you. Listen, man, I've shown you what I can do. I can't do anything for you if I'm dead. You got to keep me alive, you know, hopefully. And Vader says, the past few days have given me an appreciation of talent. Do not make me regret this. And this is a departure from Vader because generally he would have just killed her. That This would be it. But he can see, fuck, man, I, need, I can't do this alone. He has no allies None. In, in this insurrection against the, the Empire. Right. And so uh, he's like, fuck, I got to keep somebody around. So you're at least decent. I might as well keep you around. And so she says, uh, basically, you know, I, I hope one of these days we're going to get past the whole, is he going to murder me this time stage of our relationship? <laughs> Vader just ignores it. Hmm, Vrogus Voss, a pointless rock. Why? And she says, no idea. Apparently there's some kind of Jedi temple there. Maybe he's going sightseeing. And Vader's just like, there is no known temple there. Know that if this is some manner of trick, I will know who is responsible. And you were correct. I would find you. And she's like, uh, yeah, understood. And she's like, hey, uh, you need some company? And he's like, no, this is a task for me alone. And he gets in his fucking tie advanced and fucks straight off. And we see her standing there looking at him leaving. And then we see the screen change into like that digital, like that rangefinder thing. And uh, we got old, old General Grievous Carbon here. Just, uh, yes, Vader takes the bait. And, hey, you want to find the boy and get your revenge? Hey, hey, hey. Carbon can help you in your shameless attempt to usurp my mission. Hey, hey. Oh, dear rival, you will find the troublesome boy on Rogus Voss, but he won't be alone. Hey, 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 hey. And then this is when we get the, I think it's six issues, like you said. Uh, it's Vader down the one shot. It's Darth Vader 13, 14, and 15, and then it's Star Wars crossover 13 and 14. So that's six issues, which is going to be the next episode that we put out. We're going to just, we're not going to go individual issue by issue. We're just going to kind of gloss over the whole overarching story of what happened. Yeah. Um, just because I kind of feel like, it, or you you had mentioned it, and, and I agree, it's just going to take too long. So we might as well just do it all in one episode mm. and then get back to the issue by issue, like storylines or whatever. Yeah. I think this is just worth doing uh, one issue because it just makes sense. Like, I, I don't want to break this up into small pieces when we can just do it all at once and then kind of give a coherent yeah uh, like a, like a, like a, a, just a straight perspective through. on it yeah, yeah. so cuz cuz it we'll talk about it in the next issue or the next episode but the teaser being essentially that you know we've complained about the prequel stuff or stuff where we it happens in the timeline when we already know who's going to live essentially and who's going to die mm. I actually, you know, we, we complained about that, and there, it's very prevalent in this little crossover series. That's a very big issue, but you'll it's find a lot out of, what we think about it. It's a, find lot of, out. it's a lot of blue ballsing for me. Yeah, yeah. But you'll find, we'll find out. We'll find out what we, what we thought about it and how well we think they did it in the next issue. So, anyways, uh, if you want to listen to more of our shit, would you have anything else to add? No. 
If you want to listen to more of our shit, you can go to Game Rage Magazine on YouTube, like, comment, and subscribe. You can follow us on Instagram and TikTok at Game Rage Magazine, Twitter slash X at Game Rage Mag. You can follow Adam at All Gas No Trash Official on Instagram, and you can follow Frank at Anime underscore Syndicate underscore Podcast. All right, that'll uh, do it for us. We'll catch you guys on the next one. That was Panel to Panel, the Game Rage Magazine comic book podcast. Thanks for listening. If you want to know more and follow along, go to Instagram and TikTok. Follow at Game Rage Magazine. If you want to follow on Twitter slash X, at Game Rage Mag. Tune in next time.